everyone, we are back with a new video and today we are going to be installing MinIO onto Ubuntu 18.04. So what is MinIO? So MinIO is an object storage that is, I think, 100% compatible with um, S3 API, meaning that you can use your code to interact with S3 to drive MinIO. So put stuff on there, delete stuff, and then get stuff back as well. And the idea behind this, what this is cool is this is like a replacement for S3 if you need to have an object storage like S3 but have it locally. So for instance, you would do this for regulation reasons. If you can't store your information on S3 on different parts of the world, or different parts of the world, sorry. Or for security reasons, maybe it's just like a policy thing like either legal or corporate that you're not allowed to put the stuff outside of the network that you're working on like for instance if you do i don't know financing maybe or like in security or whatever so you can put it on minio and it works the same way as that you would use s3 um another reason for using it is that if you like be a developer and you just want to run the stuff locally or if you're like if you've got a QA environment or staging environment and you don't want to have yet another S3 for the QA environment, you can run this for the QA environment. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to go through all these different steps. Um, and I've got you on the page for setting up uh, MinIO on 1804. So you'll see there are some links in here and they'll be in the description. Um, so these are kind of where I got the inspiration for all these different steps like some of them are copy pasted out of the blog articles Please go read them. They're, they're very good articles and some of them have been a little bit tweaked for, for what we're trying to do here today So without further ado Let's get started. So I've got my steps over here and I've got a brand new 1804 installation over here. So First thing that we need to kind of get going with is that we need to install the latest version of Go or more or less the latest version of Go. So I do realize that there are snap install for Go, but um, for kind of security reasons, I'm going to get the Go from from Google directly rather than using some sort of a third party mechanism like a third party snap package or third party APT package want to get the stuff directly from from Google and now that we've got our installation we're gonna get on to the server we're gonna make ourselves a, a go path and then we're gonna move that. okay so we're gonna do this so this updates our go path and go route in a profile file so when you log into the SSH terminal it reads this profile file and then sets these go path and go root variables to what you're busy with and then what we're going to do is we're just going to source this so that for our current terminal for our current instant um, login those variables get set so if I were to do go path you'll see that that variable is set so I've got these exports here as well the reason why the exports are there is that if you kind of want to try to take the stuff that are done and put it in a script form to run from start to finish to get everything going in one shot, you'll need those two exports. Um, we're going to go there. Let's go into there. We're going to do some links to kind of two of the Go binaries. We're not going to use the Go FMT, but just why not? Put it this one there, and we're going to go back to our home directory. And now that we've finished with this instead of the go, we don't need this trouble. So, when you do something in the server and you don't need files anymore, it's generally a good idea to delete them. A, eh? like in the long run, when the server gets full, it saves a bit of space. Second thing is that it might turn out that somebody might use one of these files for some way, in some reason, to, um, to exploit your system. Don't necessarily think there's a big chance of it, but. Hey, maybe um, so we are going to get the uh, board essentials so this is like all the make and the C++ compilers that sort of thing and luckily it's pretty quick at the moment so we probably don't have to skip this part it will be done just now 
and it's processing, it's get almost installing, and at 100%, and for some reason now it's decided to get really, really slow, and we're done, cool. Awesome, so we've got that installed. So the next thing that we've got here, we've got MC, so that stands for like MinIO client. So this is like a SLI client for MinIO that you can use to create buckets, add files, browse the files, you can also add, I think, GCS, Google's Cloud Storage, and you can also obviously add AWS S3 so that you can manage those as well with these MC tools. So we get this, and this is gonna take a little bit while. So I'm going to skip now. Uh, uh, cool, it's done running. So we're gonna continue with it now. So we've grabbed the MinIO client. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to where we installed it and we are going to run make to get the binary version of it. And then next couple of steps what we're going to do is we're just going to put the binary inside of our user local bin so that we can run it. So as busy downloading all these dependencies it's going to install now then we're just going to create a sim link in our user local bin so that we can access it from anywhere in the system. And then what we're going to do next steps after that is get to the actual min IO server. So for now, back to where we are, we're going to go to our bin folder, create the sim link, and then if we, we've got a go and we've got a MC and if we run, it works. So back to our home folder. So let's just make sure that there's nothing left to clean up. It's all good. Nothing to clean up. So and this part is also going to take a while, so I'm also going to now skip. Okay, it's done. It's done. We've got the binary now for Manaya. So, next steps is that we need to create a user for it. So, we're going to run these commands just to make sure that we do absolutely everything that we can to lock this user down. And then we're going to move the minio binary make it executable and then just set permissions to that to the minio user second thing what we need to do right now is that we need to create the environment variables for for minio and we do this by adding all of these to the file that we just created which then gets read in by System D when it tries to start up MinIO and then MinIO reads these configs and just configures it itself based on that. So next thing, create the directory. This one gets used for the data. That one is for the configs. And then we just need to set permissions on those two folders to MinIO, which we're gonna do now. And let's check back to, uh, to our root directory. So let's see, okay, still clear, nothing there. And now what we're going to do is just download the service file for systemd so that we can get it up and running on our, our Linux system. So one of the differences that I do by, um, from one of these guides is that the guide calls the minio user minio-user. But I just prefer, it's a personal thing, calling it just minio because the context of what you're doing already tells you that it's a user. I don't, it doubles up. So I prefer just keeping it simple, keeping it short, just minio for the username. And if you look at this file, what it has inside it, in, inside the file, if you look at this user and the group in there, it's got the minio and it's got the minio user and minio user for the user and the group. So I've got these extra two commands over here that all this does is just changes that to just to be minio. So if we look at the file now, you'll see that that changed the dash user is gone. So that's all that that does. And now next thing that we need to do is we need to move that file to the systemd file. So which we got to do with this command, it's moved. Okay, so reload our configurations, then just set it as enabled. And then we can finally start it. And now hopefully if everything we've done is correct, it actually now starts up and as you can see it started up so that that looks good okay so 
Next thing that we need to do, well, we need to now secure it, and we do that by adding SSL to it. And this is what the next step is. So the next step is a bit of a tweak on a guide. You see that there's a just file that somebody provided with some of these commands in there. I tweaked them a little bit um, to make sure that we add the SANS and then just for the IP address so that we've got the DNS and the IP address as part of the SANS. So that's what these two lines does and that's what these lines does over there. And what we're going to do now is we are going to run all of these commands to get ourselves SSL certificates. We are going to move them to a place where MinIO expects them. So MinIO is smart. If it sees these two files, it knows that it needs to now switch itself from normal HTTP to SSL, HTTP, um, i.e. HTTPS. So, for some reason, OpenSSL, when I tried to generate the certificates, complains about uh, already a RAN file in the in the root home folder and um, this is all that this does it takes that line out of the open ssl config and get back to the thing make sure everything is clean okay so take that out of open ssl we're going to set two environment variables one for the ip address and then that is not quite right so that technically needs to be just the host name and if we echo it out just to make sure we have DNS address so the the server name in this case if you just type out host name is but so sorry it's a bit of a I should have called it something else to make it a bit more clearer that we're actually referencing the server here but that's what the server is called in this case so what we're going to do now after we set the environment variables we are going to start generating our certificate so give it a password okay so next thing to do generate the the certificate file after we generated the key for the certificate authority i.e the ca so and this is the file that we're going to be using to sign our actual certificate so Next thing is generate the key for the certificate for the MinIO server. So the first key that we generated up here was for our CA. Second key is for the actual certificate for MinIO. We've got there the, the certificate for the... Oh, uh, let's go back to where we were. Sorry about this. So we've got the certificate over here for our CA. And now what we need to do is generate a certificate signing request for MinIO, which we're going to do with this line over here. So, and as you'll see, it adds some SANS requests as well. And what we do then is we use this CSR, Certificate Signing Request, with our CA to generate a certificate for us that we can use for MinIO. So, next step is just to make sure that everything is correct. We've got our DNS and our IP address extension for SAN. We've got our subject as well with the CN in this case is just the IP address. Okay, so next thing is to actually sign it. So I now double check the certificate. We've got the IP address, we've got the DNS, and now we can move them to MinIO. Okay, so set the permissions on the certificate. And we copy the root certificate to our certificates folder so that when we run the MinIO client, it accepts certificate that we just self-signed. If we don't do this, it's going to complain that the certificate that we self-signed uh, just in the previous step is invalid. So we have to do that to make sure that the server that we're configuring here accepts this root CA certificate that we've been using to sign our certificates as valid. And by extension, all the certificates that it signed. Okay, so we're going to try and restart menu now, and then hopefully everything is working. And you can see that it's configured itself for HTTPS. So, and if we do the journal as well, we can see great, it's running, no errors while starting up. Okay, so next step, what we're going to do is we are going to now try to add the MinIO server that we've just installed 
to our Minar our client and then we're just going to see if we can actually connect with the client to the server so that's complaining about something so it looks like incorrect number of arguments for host add command invalid arguments provided please refer nc command so something we've done here is wrong and my assumption is it's because we're trying to use that IP address variable inside of our command. So let's try to just export the IP address. Okay. Sorry, just try and echo it rather. Sorry, echo it. So we're going to take this previous command, we're going to put it back and then all we're going to do is going to replace the IP address with the variable that we try to do add. And it's successful. So let's see. So if we do now an ls on min.io and then if we do an mb for make a bucket and we go and we're connected. And now if we go back to a file, next thing we need to do is just remove the CSR file to clean up and then you kind of need to decide what you want to do with a root CA file. So for instance, if you were to keep these files around to sign additional certificates, so let's say these root CA files is something that you want to use across your organization and a whole to sign all kinds of different other certificates is that you might want to copy and store them in a very safe place. Um, the other thing in terms of like if this is like a one shot thing you just want to get thing up and running is that you might want to delete and them all and then i don't know it's it's up to you what you want to do with these files um for me is that i don't particularly care about them but i'll also be deleting the server after i'm done with this video um so i don't particularly care whether they stay there or not so with that go it um this is the end of the video and um, you'll find pretty much all the steps and the links in the description i'll also try to put all of these different commands that are run into a uh, cell sorting script like just a one shot that you can run that does all of these things i'll try and do that for you and then if you like the content and you want to see some more of this then please subscribe or like or just leave a comment if you've got suggestions for other software that you would want me to go through this process through um, just drop them down in the comments or if you've got any questions just again drop them down in the comments and have a wonderful day cheers thank you for watching